Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool. And uh, today I wanted to put a finer point on some of the reasons why I choose higher quality tools, especially snap-on tools, um, even as a DIYer. And every time I post a snap-on video, um, I always get some comments about there are better tools for less money, or try these tools, or these are great, or this is where snap-on actually gets their tools, so you can buy them from the source. Um, I do have a lot of snap-on tools, but I have a lot of other tools um, that aren't snap-on, but I, I wanted to talk about the quality issue, and especially from the DIY perspective. I don't do this professionally. I don't make an income using these tools, more or less, but I do feel like I want the quality, and that's quality across a lot of different spectrums. Now, many times if I had to call somebody, let's say I had a, a you know, some plumbing issue and I didn't have the right tool for it, I can spend a hundred bucks on a on a wonderful, rigid, aluminum, 24-inch wrench here, or I can make a phone call and it's an instant $100 just to have somebody show up at my house. Now, of course, I'm not gaining any of their wisdom or experience, you know, or insurance coverage if it's screwed up. Um, but I'm always interested in, in playing around, trying to see if I can do it myself, learning about it, ending up with the tools. Um, and then there are a lot of things that I really like, uh, such as lighting and knives and optics, etc. Um, and I've learned over the years, some of those nuances of benefit really make using the tool much more enjoyable and also uh, retail or, or uh, uh, secondhand market sales if I want to upgrade. Um, this is a brawn here. Probably know where this came from. Um, it's a solid little light. Um, you can tell that they used the most inexpensive parts on it, um, making it, you know, sell for uh, a fifth of the cost of, of the snap-on. This one charges your phone. I like the actual on-off interface a little bit better. It doesn't have near the electronics or features, but this was given to me. Um, it's used. Um, I was uh, at one of my favorite pawn shops and um, just mentioned I wanted to look at it, and he said, you know, just take it. You can have it. He's he's a friend. Um, however, they also had a snap-on light. It wasn't this one. It was a similar model um, that was darn close to 100 bucks. So this one they gave me, just they had like $10 on it, and nobody was buying it. Um, and I was getting a few other things, so they just threw it in uh, just to get it out of the case because stuff was sitting too long. The snap-on, on the other hand, was gone the next time I went in. So somebody paid a bunch of money, I don't know how much, but just for the snap-on. And, <clears throat> you know, this essentially has almost no value just because of this probably, whereas this has a lot of value. This one's made in China. On the other hand, this one's made in China. This has, you know, a, a more detailed interface on the back, more features here. This one's, well, it's got the ability to charge tools. It's got the you know, or, or phones. It's got a nicer interface, I think. It gives you a readout that's more uh, light indicated versus, you know, digital indicated. Um, this particular snap-on here, a little persnickety as far as the, um, the mount, turning it off, which you know from my previous videos. This one's pretty solid. I've dropped it a bunch of times. You know, it's almost disposable, except it keeps working. Well, I don't know if I would trust this with my life. Not sure I would trust that. I have other solutions for that. But what I've found over time is that I have migrated my, my uh, tools, my, my items, towards the higher end. Uh, mainly, that's from learning what the benefits are, appreciating the nuances, and then just simply being able to get it. Um, like here, this is a Benchmade knife. This is the Altitude. Super light, I mean, absolute minimal design. This thing sells for a couple hundred bucks, like $200. Here's a CRKT. This guy here is about 20 bucks. You know, totally different steel, totally different design. Uh, they both have a place, but why would anybody even, why would they even make something like that that's, that's darn near nothing? I mean, it's, it's, there's very little here, yet it costs so much. And then to use carbon fiber accents, you know, for the grip, that's, that's to me, pretty neat. Look at those little aluminum spacers in there around the Torx. Um, just, it's a dynamite little knife. And then to use S90V super steel on this thing. 
Um, why? Well, this goes with me everywhere about this time of the year. This one's more of a backup in a kit. Um, I love, love, love Leica binoculars. These are tiny though, so why would you spend a bunch of money on a little tiny binocular when I could spend the same amount and get a really good large binocular? Well, because these, these uh, Leica UltraVids are the size that I want. But I wanted quality in this size. I can spend probably $10 and get a pair of binoculars this size, or $100, or $200, or $500, or $800. And these are amazing, and I enjoy using them, and I actually like them better than some of the larger binoculars that gather more light. Um, sure, those make a big difference, you know, in the extremes of the day, but just carrying it around, I have these with me. I love them, they're rock solid. And I, I have moved up to those over the years, and I appreciate them. Same way I appreciate, you know, these. Just the nuance in the handle. Even down to things like duct tape. If you've not used quality duct tape, you, you're in for a surprise. But most of you probably have, but don't realize that there is a massive difference between the no-name duct tape and the quality stuff. Gorilla tape, T-Rex tape, or 3M heavy-duty duct tape. It just is, it's worth getting that. Um, short story, I once uh, hired a contractor to do some work. Uh, we were building um, some um, kind of extensions onto a house I had, and, and uh, he shows up and he sets down this big bag of Ryobi tools. And he's gonna, he's looking around, he's gonna go to work. And I thought, Ryobi tools, really? I was judging his performance on his tools. And I thought, you know, th this is odd. If he's got what I considered lesser tools than what I've got, does that mean I could do this? It turns out he did a horrible job and he cut some huge corners. And I watched him, you know, like using his Ryobi reciprocating saw till the blade was smoking because he didn't want to get good blades. He was using cheap blades. He had cheap batteries. I was basically paying for more time and he wasn't doing a good job. And I just thought I could have done that myself. Now, I didn't know it at the time because I didn't know how to do it, but if, you know, it just took a little bit of watching to think, yeah, I could have done a lot of the decon. I could have done, done um, even some of the prep work. I might hire somebody to do the finish work because that's, that's really where there's a lot of talent. Um, but anyway, I discovered that my uh, appreciation for quality battery-powered tools um, had some bigger implications than what, um, what I originally thought. I just enjoyed a good solid tool, seemed to last for years. But watching somebody try to do a big project with inexpensive tools and having to struggle struggle with the tool. You know, it took more time. I think it was less safe. Um, I, I could see where corners were being cut because you couldn't finish things just as well because you were already struggling, you know, to get a blade through something. Anyway, I ended up having to do some repair work on his job, um, which leads me to my final point to wrap this up. A lot of people uh, don't like prejudging somebody's technique or ability or talent for using a tool with the tool brand. And I certainly, you know, wouldn't want to do that. I wouldn't want anyone to think that I was, um, you know, particularly skilled just because I might own something that looks like only a skilled person might own it. I, I think that's wrong. But I also know that the nuances of quality, the nuances of better stuff, the nuances um, that are put into some of the more expensive brands can have downstream effects in the performance on the job. Um, and I don't, I don't want to, you know, profile somebody when they walk in with a bunch of, say, brawn, you know, just level tools, but it also makes me wonder on the upper end what's, what's being missed. If this is your chosen profession, if this is what you want to do with your life, then you would want to surround yourself with the best of what you're capable of getting that allow you to do the best job. If you're just throwing stuff together, well then you motor along with things like inexpensive tools and just suffer the consequences. But as a paying customer, I notice that. And I really don't think that 
prejudging somebody by their tools is fair, but also I don't think it's fair to use junk tools on a job in order to save yourself money, but it costs a customer, which in this case is me money, um, usually in your time. Now, there's probably a ton of disagreement on this. I would love to hear it in the comments. Um, generally, if I'm suggesting, you know, you, you enlighten me, it's enlighten me about the concepts and the things I've said, not necessarily me as a person, because um, that doesn't go anywhere. But I do find I've migrated up to the better quality stuff through experience, both myself and vicariously watching other people do work. So honestly, there's a very good chance if you came to my one of my properties to do some work or if I brought one of my vehicles to you to do work and then I noticed what you were using and it was something that I saw was beneficial and was giving you an advantage and I didn't have it, a week later I might have it. You know, that's kind of how I roll. You know, that's how I learn. So anyway, if this is helpful, let me know. If it's not, tell me where, uh, where I, I've landed short. And with that, dock out.